I remember when I was doing Hunger Games, nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie. Yeah. That's not entirely accurate. Because it wouldn't work, we were told. Girls and boys can both identify with a male lead, but yeah. boys cannot identify with a female lead. Oh, absolutely. And it just makes me so happy every single time I see a movie come out that just blows through every single one of those beliefs and proves that it is just a lie. Did IQs just drop sharply while I was away? It seems as if every film or TV show I have encountered during the dark age of cinema has either had a female character prominently in the main role, a case of females as the main characters, a female director who doesn't know when to stop talking, or a cast with one male surrounded by female characters who insult and berate him into submission. As the critical drinker has correctly identified, this is the old bait and switch routine and we're all sick of it. But are female characters all that bad? And are male characters all that great? And what can we do about it? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the dark age of cinema and try to solve its many problems. Everywhere I look, men are disappearing in favor of pushy, overly aggressive, abrasive, narcissistic girl bosses whose only goal is domination and humiliation. For women, it's all dom, and for men, it's all sub. Dan Savage would be proud. Most movies and TV shows these days are filled with actresses who have a chip on their shoulder and would like to make their audience think that they are the underdogs when in truth they are some of the most privileged human beings on earth. Putting our Jordan Peterson hat on for a second, we see that it's the delusional narcissism that has utterly poisoned mainstream movies and like a limb that has been infested with disease, it needs to be cut out before it's too late and the whole body can't be saved. Yeah, brutal. Good job, Taylor Sheridan. Oftentimes, behind every girl boss character with a chip on her shoulder the size of Mount Everest, there is usually an actress or writer with a feminist agenda. Whether it's actresses in fantasy, in science fiction, in superhero movies, or in contemporary projects, we have been bombarded by people and in interviews that don't really have any personality of their own and are simply there to spout feminist talking points because for some reason, they think that is what will win them brownie points with the fans. All it is, is virtue signaling. They don't even seem like real people because there is a bitterness to them that makes them unlikable and in many cases, unwatchable. I have a theory that these characters are the way they are because their writers are like this. Writers of these characters are bitter that they have no talent and have to take it out on everyone else. There has been a ton of interviews over the years with female actors and directors who have revealed their feminist agenda to Hollywood and the world at large, and as a result, have been largely ignored or mocked. And I want to talk about a few of these today, because for as bad as the characters are, the actresses are in many ways worse, because they're real people. Let's start with Elizabeth Banks, for example. She's an actress and a filmmaker, largely known for her roles as Effie Trinket in The Hunger Games, as well as having a minor role in the Pitch Perfect movies, along with films like Surrender Dorothy and Wet Hot American Summer. She's also got a good talent for comedic acting, as she proved in The 40-Year-Old Virgin, Role Models, and Zack and Miri. She's been in the industry for a while, but I had never really heard much about her ideologies or political leanings until the release of her action comedy, if you can even call it that, Charlie's Angels. Though she was the director of the film, she also played a major role in it as Bosley, one of the upper boss babes of the Townsend Agency. It wasn't until a series of interviews were released that showcased Banks all but demanding that men go see her movie that I began to take a closer look at her. And it seems as if Elizabeth Banks bases her arguments about feminism and the necessity of this groundbreaking Charlie's Angels film on, well, I supported you, now you can support me. Newsflash, Liz, that's not how it works. 
oftentimes people don't go to see movies just because there is a female lead or an all-female cast. Madam Web obviously proved that point in droves. Using that as a reason to advocate for the excellence of a film really just suggests something about these actresses' maturity and intelligence levels. As much as Hollywood and its affiliates and subsidiaries might want you to believe that everyone should see every diversity project no matter what, consumer demand still exists. And as I mentioned in my last few videos about Madam Web, despite what studio execs might claim, men have historically been more interested in action movies, science fiction, fantasy, and superhero films than they have comedy and romance. Sure, there have been some exceptions, but to try and take a genre that has been historically male-centric and shoehorn in as much feminism as possible is going to seriously impact their bottom line, as the Marvels and Madam Web proved. In fact, it'll just make things worse. What's laughable is calling men toxic for not supporting female-led films after such a disastrous business strategy fails. Well, it's kind of like a toddler throwing a temper tantrum because the toy they didn't want is now being used by someone else. And I don't think that Elizabeth Banks understands that or how the male mind works. With these claims, it kind of makes sense why Elizabeth Banks still remains on the fringes of fame. Because if she is only making and being part of the content that no one is interested in seeing, well, she shouldn't be surprised when everyone takes her advice and doesn't watch her movies. As for Morphid Clark in Rings of Power, well, I'm fairly certain that she doesn't exist in the real world whatsoever. It's been a year and a half since the dumpster fire that was Rings of Power aired on Amazon Prime, and to this day I wonder how many social media careers that show has launched. We in the YouTube community certainly had a great time shitting on it, but despite the bad acting, the cringe dialogue, the gross bastardization of Tolkien's works, and the utter nothingness of the show itself, there were actors and actresses that put it together, specifically Sofia Numvedi, an actress who few in the mainstream had ever heard of before. But she made sure that everyone would know exactly who she was after she ensured to tell the watching audience just how groundbreaking it was having a black female dwarf present in a world that had been historically dominated by white males. I'm not going to talk about her lack of understanding about Tolkien's world or how the Lord of the Rings and its surrounding stories are a fictionalized history of England. I'll leave that to an expert like Nerd Roddick. What I do want to talk about is her obsession with being the first. If you listen to any of her interviews, it's astonishing just how much stock she puts into this made-up character, claiming how utterly groundbreaking it is and how it's a new mark in the history books of progressivism for her to be the first black female dwarf in Amazon's community theater version of Tolkien's works. I wonder if she actually thought about anything she said in her interviews before it came out, or if she actually believes that her made-up character matters this much. Now, I'm not saying that Sophia is an unlikable person. She's just out of touch, like most Hollywood actresses who get a break and suddenly think they're all that. She obviously had a hard time making it big before, and suddenly she's being cast in the most expensive show ever, made by a large streaming network, and she needs to say her piece and make sure that people remember her when everything is said and done. Congratulations, kiddo. You did just that. But I'm willing to guess it's not for the reason that you think. One of the things that I dislike about these modern feminist actresses is that they act like they were the first to do everything. That a movie is groundbreaking because it has an all-female cast or includes a person of color in a role. They act as if people of color have never had any role in any movie ever. It's this collective, almost hive-mind amnesia that makes this toxic feminist infestation so irritating. There's been countless examples where people of color or females have broken new ground. I mean, look at Sidney Poitier in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Showing a black dude with a white chick in a film could get you hung in the South in those days. In fact, the movie was largely banned throughout the South. For these actresses to come out and say they were the first at anything is the height of narcissism. Movies where these sorts of characters are in groundbreaking roles are a dime a dozen these days, and no amount of pandering, no amount of cajoling or foot stomping is going to erase that fact. And speaking of the height of narcissism, these activist actresses need to either stop talking or go away. 
Before the rise of the internet and social media, there was a certain mystique to actors and actresses. We never really got a glimpse into the inner workings of their lives. But once the internet democratized access, the floodgates of dumbassery opened wide. I can't pinpoint any specific actress who declared herself to be the spokesperson for the modern audience, but there are many, and they are all annoying as fuck. Whether it's saying things that can easily be taken out of context, only to walk them back with half-hearted apologies, or delusions of grandeur about just what they are adding to the project they are starring in, or spouting off facts that are simply untrue about women and equality in Hollywood. All of it comes with an attempt to place a spotlight on themselves, their accomplishments, their expectations, their perception of reality, and just how it impacts them as human beings, all while expecting the rest of us to believe them. Another example is Jennifer Lawrence. In an interview, she decided to share her thoughts about action heroes and movies and the roles women played in them. This is, of course, followed up by her assertions that she was a trailblazer for the genre because before she came along, there had never been any female action heroes. I guess someone never watched The Terminator or Alien. Imagine the balls it takes to sit there and claim with utter certainty something that is absolutely untrue. Imagine being so ignorant of the past that you blind yourself to reality in a, such a hilarious way. But I genuinely think that Jennifer Lawrence doesn't watch any other films other than her own. Her life experience is probably so small that she simply might not be aware that other action movies with female stars have existed decades before she even entered Hollywood. It's the combination of narcissism and ignorance that blows my mind. Or perhaps how downright chavvy Jennifer Lawrence truly is. Yep, you heard me. She's a total chav. Another example of this extreme narcissism mixed with delusion is a person that we have all grown very familiar with over the course of the last year, our girl Rachel Zegler. I just mean that it's no longer 1937, and we absolutely wrote a Snow White that she's is... not going to be yeah, saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince, and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be. Though she has been in very poorly received films throughout her short career, she seems to believe that simply because she exists, it is a cause for her to gain more money, more fame, and more notoriety than her peers. As a result of her narcissism and the inability to cease digging a hole for herself, the Snow White film has been delayed forever, and something of an apology tour has begun. Is it genuine? Well, that's really dependent upon the actress who is giving the apologies. And since she's not that good at acting, she makes it stupidly obvious that this is a studio-mandated apology tour, with Disney trying desperately to salvage any of the wreckage they caused. As it stands, The Daily Wire is simply waiting for Disney to release this movie so they can release their own superior version with our girl Brett Cooper. Oh, Rachel, how we all love you. Never change, please. Finally, but perhaps most insidiously, the toxic feminism that has enveloped Hollywood has many of the activist actresses hating on the fans. From Monique Ingram's claims about racist comments she received while starring in Obi-Wan Kenobi, or Tatiana Maslany spouting about how they made She-Hulk to troll fans, to Olivia Wilde's campaign to smear men she deemed toxic with her movie flop Don't Worry Darling, these feminists have decided to take the power that they have and use it to bully and harass people they don't agree with. And that's perhaps the most insidious part about all of this. To have so much power that you can use it to degrade and drive off your main source of income really lends credence to the belief that all forms of entertainment are dying. On the whole, because of political polarization propagated by social media, people have become vindictive and selfish, seeking out ways to hurt instead of cultivating ways to create. Feminism in Hollywood is by no means the only culprit, but it's certainly the most public one. Watching people like these so-called influencers brag about their self-importance and lie about the history of cinema is what's largely driven audiences away. And audiences aren't stupid, and they don't like being talked down to. We've reached a point where very few good things are being written and produced anymore, and Hollywood is simply another cesspool of self-important, self-aggrandizing activism. It's Hollywood, baby. The legendary writer Mark Twain once said that it is better to keep your mouth closed and let people think you're a fool than open it and remove all doubt. 
And with that in mind, it's become pretty obvious why Hollywood is failing. But what do you guys think of all this? Do you think we've seen the last of the activism from Hollywood after their latest failure in Madam Web? Or will they continue full steam ahead with their woke activism? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.